last time on Dog Naropa, Trigger Happy Havoc. Citra raises a giant circle. And the camera angle has this totally looking down as she is shirt. Thanks, camera angle. You know, you know what we really need in these games. It's the drama. It's the fan service. And now, back to trying to ditch school. Okay, and I'm back for more Dog Naropa. Oh, during this, last time I did this, I did very well this part. So, I'm gonna try again. I get through this, the, the, the very last mini game of this thing. Oh god, well, I have to get through it so I can beat I get the next chapter. Oh, I hate rhythm timing games, but Anyways, last time we found out that Mazono wasn't as maybe as innocent as we thought she might be. So, yeah. Where we did? I forget. Anyways, let's go on. Gary says it was a bouldering act. I almost didn't notice at first, but is that the key point here? There's a bit to learn about, there's a bit more to learn about non-top debates. Like to hear more? Absolutely. Not out, the only possible start to going up. Or how many we spot there is this lead only one liar contradiction in that debate. What I'm trying to say is not all weak spots you see on the straight false. Truthful on the wrong one and you fail to refute what they say. You also lower your trust to everyone and influence gauge will take damage. Now this is important because if your influence gauge reaches zero, you fail. You're a loser! You have to rely on your own logic. To determine which spots actually lies your contradiction. Well, good luck! Have fun! The incident took place in Makoto's room. Saika was first attacked in the main room. She then fled into the bathroom. Then the killer ran after her. And they got into the bathroom. At that point, the killer had to try and bust down the door. Because mm -hmm. Sayaka had locked it. Uh -huh. And finally, the culprit had Sayaka cornered. To finish the job, they stabbed her with the kitchen knife. It was you, wasn't it, Makoto? Admit it! We already know the answer. It's not really going to open. But the reason for that is 
The incident took place in the Kodos where Saika was first. She then fled into the... Then the killer ran, and they got into the bathroom. At that point, the killer had to try and fuck because Saika had locked it. No, he's wrong. Loser. The reason my bathroom didn't open wasn't because it was locked. After all, the girls' rooms are the only ones with locking bathrooms, right? Remember? Yes, now that you mention it, that is true. Then why didn't your bathroom door open? Because it was stuck. Huh? What are you talking about? My bathroom door doesn't fit in the frame quite right. Monokuma over there can testify to that. Stop pointing at me, Timothy. Yep, true as true can be. But you know, you're supposed to be the ultimate lucky student, right? But to have such a cruddy door... <laughs> that's not lucky at all! So the reason the door didn't open was just because it was stuck. But the killer didn't know that and assumed it was locked. So they tore apart the doorknob to get in. Okay, but then why would the killer even think the door was locked in the first place? Everyone should have known you can't lock any of the boys' bathrooms. The killer could easily make that mistake, thanks to one important detail about the scene of the crime. One important detail? Something the killer didn't know. Huh. For some reason they were convinced the door was locked. When the... I got it! The killer must not have realized that it was my room. Oh, I it heals myself if I get right, I guess. What? Are you saying the culprit didn't even know where he was? That's inconceivable! Stop looking so, so surprised. And yet, he's absolutely right. Well, to be more specific, what the killer didn't know was that Makoto and Sayaka had switched rooms. Which is what led to the misunderstanding about the bathroom. If Sayaka had been in her own room, then... Then there would have been a lock on the door, and they would have had to break through! Yep. So they had no idea how unnecessary their actions were. Ultimately, we can't know if it came open by force or simply by accident, but the killer must have been considerably confused, with no idea how they actually got the door open. Regardless, it was a pointless act. Wasting time trying to break down a door that wasn't locked is... Definitely something I wouldn't do, since I would have known exactly why it wasn't opening, right? That is a definite possibility. Yeah, man, I'm not. Man, I'm not gonna admit that I'm wrong. Cause I'm never wrong. Even when I'm wrong, even when I'm wrong, I'm not wrong, and I never admit it. So the killer would have to be someone who didn't know they'd switched rooms. Then Makoto couldn't have done it. Yes, thank you. That's what I've been trying to tell you all, all of you. Okay, then who did do it? I'm sorry, but I give up! Quit without saving! But... What happens if we can't decide on who we think did it? Jeez, you, you were all so determined it was me, weren't ya? You didn't, think about, you didn't think about anybody else? You guys even investigate at all? Is it just me and Kirigiri doing investigations around here? Well, why don't we just vote right now? Majority rules! Sure. Majority rules? Do you really think that's a good idea? Well, it is for you. Yeah, our necks are on the line here. Someone seriously needs to do something. Does no one have any other thoughts or questions? It does not matter how trivial they may seem. Oh, as a matter of fact, I do have one question. Okay. What would that, what would that be? Oh, you... 
You don't gotta sound so disappointed. It's fine, it's fine. Just ask your question. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, um, well, I was just wondering, how did the culprit get into Makoto's room in the first place? Hmm, yes. How did the killer get inside? Looks like Kirigiri knows. She's smiling about it. Maybe Sayaka just dropped the key somewhere and the culprit picked it up. That's possible, right? I don't think so. That seems way too convenient. Then... Maybe someone picked the lock? Negative! If you remember, Monokuma made it quite clear that the locks are all unpickable. And he's a trustworthy source. Fine. How about this? The killer got in the easy way. They could have knocked and said they wanted to talk or something, and Miss Maizono just let him in. No, that can't be it either. Oh, -ho! trying to argue against me? Sounds like someone doesn't know his place. I'm gonna bit slap a, a fatty. Hello? Why exactly can't that be it? Killer. There's a reason that Mazuna invited her killer in the room. Or oh, he has the answer. I got it! Because Sayaka was already scared, remember? That's why she asked me to switch rooms in the first place. The same goes for you, Mazono. No matter who it is, don't open the door for anyone. Even if, even if I'm sure it's you, I absolutely won't open it. Otherwise, what's the point of even switching? Knowing what she'd been through, I just can't believe she would have opened the door for anyone. What if her being scared was a lie? Do, do, do. Huh? Well, what the hell is that supposed to mean? Why would she lie about something like that? I know you don't want to consider it, but look at this and tell me. Can you still deny the possibility? So they want to talk to you about this, this, us too. In five minutes, come see me in my room. It's like I'm in place to make sure you don't get the wrong room. Okay. I found a notepad during my search, and I shaded in the top sheet with a pencil. And these are the words that appear. Oh man! I've totally seen people do that on detective shows. When you write, it can leave an imprint. Sketch over the next sheet of paper, and you can see the words. <coughs> when I saw that, I was like, holy crap! I better make sure I rip the paper out before I use it from now on. It's a pretty old-fashioned technique, but even the classics can be surprisingly useful sometimes. Kirigiri looks proud. She's pr Yep, she's very proud of, it, of her accomplishments. Oh, and I should also mention, I found the notepad on the desk in Makoto's room. Oh, the notepad's all right, thought. Ah, no, that, that's not important right now. Which means, only someone who had been in Makoto's room before the incident could have written it. Now I'm serious. Uh, now it's her serious face. Then either it was Makoto who lived there, or Sayaka who switched rooms for a single night. So, Makoto, did you write this? No, I didn't. But... Of course you didn't. Because the note also bears a perfectly legible signature. Sayaka's signature. Then that note... Mizuno wrote it? But, but why? Why would she write that? The note was likely her way of getting in touch with a certain someone. 
She must have slid it under their door to let them know she wanted to meet with them in secret. If you got an invitation like that from the ultimate pop sensation, what young man could resist? He sounds excited. Of course, I'm only into 2D, so it wouldn't have any effect on me. Sure. Keep telling yourself that. But can we be sure anyone even got this note? And honestly, even if they did, I do not think they are at all involved in what happened. Huh? What makes you say that? <laughs> Would you like to hear what I have to say? Not really, but I guess you're gonna say it anyways. Very well then. Pay attention. Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, correct? But in the note, the place they were asked to come to, it specifically says, my room. I see. So if someone wrote that note, then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Exactly. The room that Makoto was staying in. So in other words, even if someone did read the note and did what it said, they would not have any connection to what happened. It certainly would seem that way. I came to my room and that was another room, right what the note says. Must be because... Sayaka and Makoto switched that in the note. It's specifically I see. Then they would have gone to Sayaka. Exactly. The room that Makoto... No, that's wrong! You're wrong, Celeste! Wrong. The nameplates on my and Sayaka's rooms got switched. They got switched? That's right. The nameplates got switched, just like the rooms themselves. As a result, the nameplate on Sayaka's room actually had Makoto's name. And the nameplate on Makoto's room had Sayaka's. So what you're saying is, the room Sayaka was staying in was actually marked as her room. Then, if someone did do what the note said, they would end up at Makoto's room where Sayaka was. Plus, their rooms are right next to each other, so switching the nameplates would be no problem. And the one who switched the names was... Well, of course it wasn't you, right, Makoto? Right? Uh, uh, I'm trying to realize something. Okay, then who did it? I can switch the, the name plate. That's I got her. her. Me and Sayaka were the only ones who ever knew about us switching rooms. So the only other person besides me who would even know to switch the name plates was Sayaka. You can also infer as much from her note. I mean, I want to talk to you about just us two. If I met, come see me in my room. Let's yes, let's let's get giggity on the Kudo's bed. <laughs> nameplate, make sure you don't get the wrong room, okay? She specifically tells the reader to check the nameplate. She would only have written that if she knew the nameplates had been switched. But why would she switch them in the first place? Why? She wanted someone to come to the room she was in, and also hide the fact that it was Makoto's room. What? Inviting someone to your room, but not telling them you'd switched rooms. Why would anyone do that? To understand that, we first need to understand what happened after she invited the person into the room. That's where the answer lies. What happened then was probably mm. whoever she invited over came in and attacked her. Hmm. Really? We figured it out. We know who did it. Whoever she invited over is the culprit. <laughs> wow. It, 
I just realized he's in between both dead people. He's both dead people. He's in, he's, he's in between Mizuno and and Enoshima. But we still don't know who it is, you goddamn idiot. Sayaka fought with her killer there in the room, yes? Perhaps the answer to our previous question lies in that initial struggle. Yes, I think you're right. Then... We just have to figure out what happened during the fight, right? That reminds me. There was a replica sword at the murder scene. Was that perhaps used during the fight? Oh yeah. What's the deal with that sword? Sayaka suggested I should hold on to it. I thought it might come in handy if I had to defend myself. It seems pretty likely that the killer used it to break Sayaka's right wrist. How the hell could you possibly know that's what broke her wrist? Because... Of her wrists. I got it! All you have to do is take a good look at her broken wrist, and it should become pretty clear. Right there where her wrist is all swollen, there's something glittery there. See? See, we took pictures. Is... is that gold? It sure is. Specifically, the gold coating from the replica sword. You barely have to touch that stuff, and it'll stick right to you. And there's some on her wrist because... I got it! Because she got hit with the sword right there on her wrist! Yes! Very good, Ishimaru. Do you want a cookie? I see, I see. And so the truth draws ever closer. All right, then it's about time to solve this mystery. What happened in my room? And what led to Mizuno's death? That's what we need to make clear. That's one to learn. What's up here? More? Are you still on top debate? Cause it's gonna get a lot fucking harder now. Start with the next debate. I start loading multiple truth bolts in your truth cylinder. Cause I like the like, spots. Only one of these bolts can be actually repeat the proper statement. Here on out, you have to command the right truth bolt, right spots for the right statement. And I send you influence gains. Bullet. Kind. The kind of three words from the cylinder. Of course, we set the mean. I already set the mean, but okay. broke out. The culprit grabbed the sword, and that's when the first blow was dealt. A sword-based sneak attack. And that's what broke Miss Maizono's wrist. Oh, oh, damn it. She tried to fight back. There. She grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away. But then the culprit took that from her, too. And they killed her with it. And that's exactly what happened. Are you first and left thing afterwards? Your event? At least it's incredible details. When the fighting broke out, the culprit grabbed the sword. And that's when the first blow was dealt. A sword-based sneak attack. No, it's wrong. Actually, no. I don't think the fight started with the sword. Why not? Yeah. But I'm, but I'm, but I'm not Curry. I'm always right. Because the sword sheath had been scratched. See? There's a gash in it. Like someone cut into it with something sharp. Something sharp? You mean like the kitchen knife? That was the only sharp thing found at the scene. Stop jumping ahead. Slow down and explain it so I get what the hell's going on. If the sword was used first, there wouldn't be any explanation for the scratch on the sheath. 
If you are going to attack with the sword, you take it out of the sheath first, right? That's true. With the sheath on, it'd be heavy and bulky and useless as shit. Okay, so how did the sheath get damaged? If they got attacked with the kitchen knife, maybe they grabbed the sword as a defensive impulse. In that situation, there wouldn't be any time to actually unsheath the sword. So you're saying the sword was initially used to defend against an attack from the knife? Which means whoever had the kitchen knife was the one who attacked first. I think I get it. So here's how it all played out. The culprit came in, found the kitchen knife hidden there somewhere, then they took the knife and attacked Sayaka before she knew what was happening. So she grabbed the sword to defend herself, but then the culprit took that from her too. Then, after they broke her wrist with the sword, they took the knife and finished it. Sorry, but I don't think Sayaka used the sword to defend herself. What? How the hell can you not think that? Because she never held the sword at all. There's a certain part of her body that makes this clear. Whatever body that shows you know, use the sword. Um. I got it. You're talking about her palms, right? The palms of her hands were perfectly clean. So I don't think she ever picked up the sword. How can you know that just by looking at her palms? Remember? The gold paint or flake? Remember? Like I said before, the gold coating on that sword comes right off. All you have to do is touch it. In fact, if you look, you'll notice that a lot of the gold has already come off the handle. It's safe to assume that's because whoever used the sword got some of it on their hands. There's really no way she could have picked it up and come away completely clean. Maybe she washed her hands after she had escaped into the bathroom. Sorry, but I don't think so. Why do you say that? Is it because you think I'm ugly? No, that's not it at all. Because... Oh, I can't remove it. She's afraid of water. <laughs> water She's afraid According of... To the She's waterphobic. Fire, Sayaka's time of death was around 1.30 a.m. In other words, at nighttime. And the water in the bathroom shuts off at nighttime, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Actually, I haven't taken a shower here yet. Oh, my. You're no different. You smell like a big, fat, ugly donkey. Hmm? I'm not sure whether to take that as an insult or a compliment. Really? 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 An insult, obviously. So anyway, if Sayaka never touched the sword, then that means the killer is the only one who used the sword. But hold on. If that's right, then the one who damaged the sheath with the kitchen knife was... You have to be... God! <coughs> <coughs> she had the kitchen knife? But... We already said that the attack started with... The person with the knife attacked first, and the sword was used as an impromptu defense. And the one who attacked first was... Sayaka? Now do you understand? She wasn't a blameless victim in this. Like, smug, curious look. Like... Like... It wasn't all. Here is like. It wasn't all that. No, far from it. It's almost as if she'd been planning to commit a murder of her own. What? She took the knife from the kitchen, then invited the culprit to the room she was staying in. And if it's true that she had the kitchen knife and attacked without provocation. Indeed. These are all the actions of an assailant. Which brings up another point. Nakoto, Sayaka was the one who suggested you two switch rooms, correct? Maybe the reason she wanted to switch rooms was so that she could pin the crime on you. That is a possibility, is it not? Sayaka wanted to... on me? Oh my god. 
that's 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 that sly figury smile. I could also explain why she would switch the nameplates. She wanted to get whoever she had targeted to come to Makoto's room where she was staying. And by committing the murder there, instead of her room, that would implicate Makoto. But for that to work, the target had to be lured out while still keeping the room swap a secret. If the target knew she had switched rooms, they would have become suspicious right away. So all that's why she switched the names? But doesn't that plan seem a little risky? For one thing, even if her plan worked, Mr. Naegi would just tell everyone they'd switched rooms. I don't know. I'm not sure our soft-hearted Makoto is capable of that kind of cutthroat behavior. I'm sure Sayaka realized the same thing, which is why out of all of us, she asked him to switch rooms. Oh, damn. And plus, she was the ultimate pop sensation. A totally forgettable kid, or a national superstar. Who are you more likely to believe? Are you blushing? Are you blushing? Fukawa? Foko? You seem turned on about something. Wait, then... You're saying she had this all planned out? You're eating your hand? Holy shit! But in the end, her plan backfired. She launched her attack with the knife, then found herself under attack in turn. That must be when her wrist got broken, and she was forced to drop the knife. The tables were suddenly turned on her. And she died at the hands of the one she planned to murder. Just hold on! That, that can't be true! Because... Because... Hey! Hey! You guys have totally derailed the argument! You're being super boring right now! Come on, hurry up and decide who did it! Wouldn't it be awful if I had to punish you all just because you ran out of time? Oh, yeah. We gotta decide who we think did it. Oh, fuck. Makoto, right now you just need to concentrate on figuring out the answer to this mystery. If we can't uncover who murdered Sayaka, it's over for all of us. Are we all over? Is it over now? Is there more to, is, is there more to this story meets the eye? I don't know. We'll find out next time! I'm dying to have it. Yeah, I'm going to put out the inevitable, but... You know, whatever. Never stop learning. Enjoy the randomness. I'll see you next time. Oh, hit that thumb up button.